Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Oh, no. They had a little rise that came off the steps about this high off the ground, and I got there walking and not looking and walked right off. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't fall on my face, I just kind of stumbled. I didn't really fall. Oh, I could have fallen. Hallelujah. Praise God. On my face, which I'm glad I didn't. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. This we were teaching on the blood covenant. We teach ministry on the, on the covenant of blood, and uh, we we thought we were going to share for just a couple of weeks, and then kind of move on this, into the authority of the believer. We haven't finished yet. It's been a month and a half. So, uh, me and series, we just never know when they're going in. Hallelujah. We did that life of teaching with Paul a few years ago, and I started on January. I thought I'd be done in like two, three months. Two years later, we finished. So, oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, you start out. See, see, preachers are led by the Holy Ghost too. Did you know that? Yes. Did Amen. you know that? Amen. See, God will tell you and lead you in a direction. You think He thinks going to be one way, ends up being a whole other way. But see, that's why we have to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Now you know you got to know the Word. You're led by the Spirit because if you don't know the Word, you won't know if it's the Spirit or not. <laughs> I've seen some people come and say, "But God told me." I think, "My God, the Word says don't do that." You can't say God told you to do it. <laughs> Amen. Because the Word and the Spirit they agree. Amen. Uh, last Saturday night, I uh, I ministered to our the leaders at, at uh, Exalt Church. And uh, I'm not a leadership guy. As far as I don't teach leadership. That's just, that's not me. I know guys got you know, 15 steps to this and 12 principles of this and, you know, the hierarchy of this and the blow, they've got flow charts there. If you remember what flow charts are, you're good. <laughs> and all the program we had, all used to, I still got my flow chart in Timothy, you write little things, you know, draw your lines. Anyway, they got flow charts for everything and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, he wants me to teach on his leaders. Well, see, as soon as he asked me, the Lord gave me a title. See, the Holy Ghost can lead you differently than what you think He'll lead you. Yeah. It's not my sermon, but it's still good anyhow. <laughs> I, I got a title. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go put the meat on the bones. Mm -hmm. You know, and study that and come up. And then when I went and taught it, I taught it. It's the only time I've ever taught this anywhere. I've never taught it before. before I got, got it fresh out of heaven. Amen. I thought, I can teach leadership now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. It's a whole different way because we talk on the surface of leadership. Amen. That was my sermon. My, my message to his leaders with the servanthood of leadership. You know, it's not about you being the big dog, you being in charge. It's about the fact that every leader is called to help facilitate a person's calling and destiny with God. Yes. That's true leadership. Yes. So when you know, you're really a servant helping mm -hmm. them achieve their calling and their destiny. Yes. Amen. In the kingdom and body of Christ. Amen. Praise God. So uh, he led me to start ministry on blood covenant, thinking I was going to get to the authority of the believer quicker than I did. And I haven't gotten to the authority yet. And we'll get, we're going to get there. We were, we were, about a couple of weeks ago when we were with you, uh, we were talking about the, the fact that the blood of Jesus speaks. This is really kind of wrapping up this teaching on the blood covenant. And we said there's eight things the blood of Jesus speaks. Number one, we said it, you are justified. The blood of Jesus tells us that you are justified. Can you say, thank God I'm justified? Thank God I'm justified. Like that old people say, what does that mean? That means just as if I've never sinned. Can you say amen? Oh, it did good. That you can go before God. Say, yeah, but I knew it now. I bet I messed up. See, when you, when you get it under the blood, He can't see it. Amen. Come on now. That's right. That's right. And I want you to know that when you come to the throne of God, to speak to God, there is not, there, there is not a void between you and God. Because between you and the Father is the mercy seat. Amen. And you know what's on the mercy seat? The blood of Jesus. Jesus. And you know what it says? Justified. Just as if I've never sinned. Can you say glory to God? Glory. Thank God the blood is sitting down on that mercy crying out, justified. Yeah, but the devil's up there calling me this, calling that. Yeah, but I got an advocate with the Father sitting there right in his right hand. Yes. Hallelujah. And then I can you say amen. He makes intercession for me, praise Hallelujah. God. And he looks over and says, they're justified. That's my blood right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's, not, that's shouting grounds, folks. Amen. Now, see, like, about 20 years ago in a Randwick meeting, you'd be happy all over the building right now. Great Gene run up and sing, you know, the blood bought church, we just dance for now. <laughs> Talking about the blood. Can you say amen? amen. I'm telling you, we need to have a revelation once again in this new generation that the blood of Jesus covers us. The blood of Jesus washes us. The blood of Jesus sanctifies us. Amen. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. Hallelujah. That we can plead the power of the blood of Jesus over the circumstances of life, Lord. Amen. God. And it cries out, justify. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
instead of walking around going, well, was me. Amen. I said, I grew up Pentecostal. I, I hear old folks going, by plead the blood. I, and I thought, well, as a kid, I went, what in the world are they talking about? I had no clue. I just knew it worked. <laughs> 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 I didn't know what they were talking about. But you understand, you plead your case based on the fact that you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Yes. The blood of your, you plead, yes. you plead, you plead based on the power of the blood. We sing it, you know, we, now if you grew up like I did at the Domination Church, you you, you read the, you sing the first three stanzas in the course, and then you close your hand, love your family like that, and you clap like this. Anybody remember those days? Nobody got it? All right, some of you old Pentecostal folks, you know, you got to know you did that. You had tambourine. And some people had spoons. Turn some new and play the spoons. Yeah. Hallelujah. The second thing that spoke was, we said a couple weeks ago, you're redeemed. Oh, thank God we're redeemed. Amen. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. What's that name? I've been purchased. I've been bought back. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That King James is a peculiar people. That you read me first, you're a purchased people. Amen. What have you been purchased with? The precious blood of Christ. Glory to God. You've been bought with the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. What do we say? Dr. Ken Stewart used to say when he, when he, he was, some of you may not know who he is, but. Uh, he was at that time. I went to the International Provost from the Bible Training Centers International, and he, he started a church there, family church there in Tulsa. And uh, but he, he he ministered. He always just said this: "When you know, for God so loved the world, he said the love of God says this: For God so deemed you valuable and precious that He sent His only begotten Amen. Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. God deemed you so valuable and precious that He <laughs> redeemed you." Amen. The value of your spiritual life, the value of you to God was His own Son. Yeah. Amen. He equated your value to that of His own Son. Wow. Now some of you are sitting down there like a cow in a new gate, yeah. a dog in a new bowl. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to be riding home this afternoon, you'll be riding your car going, you know, yeah, Pastor's talking about the fact that we've been redeemed. You got to slam on brakes, get out and run around the car and dance right there in the middle of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Hallelujah. I mean, folks are crazy. Well, you don't know understand. I'm redeemed. Hallelujah. I've been bought. God deemed me so valuable and precious that He equated my life to that of His very own Son that He gave Him to redeem me back to Himself. Glory to God. Glory to God. somebody shout glory? Somebody say hallelujah. 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 I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed from sin. You've been redeemed from Satan's authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we all remember Amen. Flip Wilson and his alter ego, Geraldine. Yeah. And Geraldine said, the devil made me do it, honey. The devil yeah. can't make you do anything when you've been redeemed. Right, right, right. I said, the devil can't make you do anything when you've been redeemed. Yeah. You've been bought back from his authority. Yeah. He no longer has the power over you. Glory to Hallelujah. God. You Hallelujah. can say, no. no. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been bought with a price. Amen. Hallelujah. I belong to God. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you something. If somebody don't get up and shout, at least wave a hanky, I'm going to get upset. <laughs> Glory. I was in a church one time, a little lady sat on the second row. I was preaching on the blood of Jesus, and she sat there holding out like this. And every time she waved, the harder I'd preach. Oh, yeah. there, was a, there was an older gentleman sitting there over there. He, go, he, got, he couldn't dance. He was so old. He held him to the end of the pew. He like this. <laughs> the whole service. <laughs> and, and the more the more he tapped and the more she waved, the harder I preach. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God forever. So we're redeemed. And we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Thank God. Oh, thank God. The, the curse that is in the law is no longer over our lives. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you listen? Amen. Deuteronomy says that we can have days of heaven. On the earth. Amen. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Now, that's okay. But you know what? You ain't got to wait till you get there to sing and shout victory. You don't have to wait till you get there to have a day of rejoicing. Amen. I said, Amen. Yes. It's just like that song, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. You don't have to have a feeling everything's going to be all right. I got an assurance that everything yes. is all right. Yes. Hallelujah. It's all by the blood of Jesus. Praise God. Yes. Can you say, Amen? Yes. I've been redeemed by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Yes. And then last, we 
say, we talk about, well, we talk about we have peace with God. One of the greatest needs of humanity is peace. Yes. Yes. Amen to that. And when you are in a relationship with God Almighty, Jesus said, peace I give to you. Not as the world give I to you, but as I give unto you. Amen. Glory to you. What kind of peace is that? It's the peace that passes all understanding. You see, this kind of peace will give you calm in the midst of the storm. Yeah. This kind of peace will say it's okay when nothing's okay. Yeah. This kind of peace will say you got it when you know when you're looking at it and saying, I don't got it. You feel like Igor, I Igor from you know young Frankenstein. You know, I got it, I got it, I don't got it. Alright, no, you got it. You know Nancy Harmer going on there. We got it. Anyway. Jesus gives us peace, not as the world. What does the world give us peace? The world will come up with all kinds of ways to give you peace. Yes. To drown your sorrows and to drown your troubles and to drown the circumstances of life in all kinds of venues, all kinds of ways. It will come up with everything in the world except the one thing, the one place, and the one who can give you the peace you desire, the peace you want, and the peace you can have. And that is God through Jesus Christ. You have peace that was blood. Yeah. 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 You're no longer a stranger to the covenants of God. You're no longer alienated from Him. There's no longer a wall of partition between you and God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. It's been written to by the power of the Holy Ghost when Glory. Jesus was, hallelujah, hallelujah, when Jesus died on the cross and took your penalty and took your sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And now we have what? We have peace yeah. with God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I got peace with Glory. God. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not alienated from God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad God's not ticked off with me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Nobody wants God ticked off with them. Remember Jesus when he died on the cross, you know, he could have called ten legions of angels. Or twelve, or whatever he said. Something. A bunch! Truckload! He could have wiped out that whole bunch. But you see, he, had, he wasn't coming to be angry with him. He came to say Save us. Amen. To seek and save the lost. Amen. To bring us into relationship with the Father. So we can have peace with God. Glory. Amen. Yes, we're, we're, you know, we, we want to do right. We're going to talk about you can't, how can you say I love God and, and do that which he abhors? Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. He wants you and he'll empower you. Yeah. But he's not angry with you. If you're struggling, He's working with you in your struggles. Amen. The Spirit of God's dealing with you. The Spirit of God's saying, come on now. Come on now. Come on. Get up from there. Get up out of that mess. Shake yourself from the things of the world. Amen. Come run with me. Hallelujah. Amen. When one scripture Romans said he raises up at the, the newness of life, King James says, the, I, I believe it might be Wayman who says it this way. He says he brought us into a whole new plane altogether. Mm -hmm. Woo, hallelujah. We can walk with God. Remember that old song? We go to the garden. I go to the garden alone. And he walks with me and talks with me and tells me, I am his home. Amen. When we come to the Father, he doesn't come with anger. He comes and he wraps his arms of love around us and says, I love you. Mm -hmm. You're mine. Amen. Yeah, but I messed up. That's okay. Not okay that you did it, but it's okay because i got an answer. Amen. I've got an answer. Yeah. Amen. I'm at peace with you because my son sheds blood. Amen. I love you. Puts his arms of love around us. I tell you, the only people that really get in trouble with God are the obstinate. Mm -hmm. Those who say, I can do this and get away with it, it don't matter. So you think, God don't, don't have to put up with that. Amen. But when you're, you're wanting to serve God, maybe you're struggling. Right. Maybe there's, there's things in your life that you're battling and you want to overcome so bad that you just, yeah. He just puts us on stage. We've got this together. Amen. And I've got a grace that will help you when, yes. when you've reached the end of your ability to say, uh, to, to quit, to say no. My grace will take over you. Just turn to me and Amen. put your trust in me. Amen. And you can't sit and go, God, don't care. I'm sleeping anybody I want to sleep and smoke anything I want to smoke and drink anything I want to drink. God don't care. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. But if you're going, I've been messed up there. Lord, I messed up here. I, I, 
I'm not angry with you, son. I'm not angry with your daughter. Amen. Wrap my arms of love around you. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost strengthen you. Amen. And you're going to get up and run. We're going to run this race together. Yes. And you're going to win. You're going to win. Amen. Yes. Yes. You're, you're, you're a winner. You're not a loser. Amen. Amen. You're the head, not the tail above only, and not beneath. Glory to God. Yes. See, I'm not, I'm not trying. I don't want to preach the grace that says do whatever you want. God don't care. I want to preach the grace that says when you know you've done wrong and you come to him, there's a grace that helps you to rise up above that place. Amen. And walk in that new plane all together. Amen. Amen. To turn to him and repent and say, I'm sorry, God. I, I, I know. I know I displeased you. That's okay. I'm angry with you. I'm your restorer. Amen. Amen. I'm your strength. Amen. I'm your undergirding. And I always love you. <coughs> now, how many know that Peter? Now, some of us could probably relate to Peter real good. I used to call Peter foot and mouth disease guy. <laughs> that guy always had his foot in his mouth. <laughs> Amen. You know, Peter, Jesus, Jesus goes, you know, and says, uh, talks about the fact they're all going to scare people. Not me, I'm going to be right there, Lord. He said, man, before the cop crows twice, he's going to deny me three times. He knew it. What? Not me. <laughs> now, Peter went from Mr. I'm not, and then he goes and cuts some guy's ear off. <laughs> so he cuts the guy's ear off. Peter says, Lord, so Peter, go get the ear. He has to bring it back, dirt and stuff all over it, blood everywhere. Jesus puts it back on and heals the guy's ears. Yeah. We're, talking about, we're talking about cool plastic surgeries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then Peter, they get hauled off Peter. Then Peter denies it. Three times. And finally, because they said, your speech does betray you, he started cussing. <laughs> but you know what Jesus had said about Peter before it even happened? I have prayed for thee that after thou art converted, you'll strengthen the brethren. Yeah. Amen. 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 He knew what he was going to do. Yes. Amen. I said he knew what he was going to do. Yeah. Right. He yeah. knew he was going to fail. He knew he was going to mess up. And he looked at him, and through the eyes of compassion, and the eyes, uh, eyes of love, and the eyes of destiny. Mm -hmm. And he said, I know you're going to mess up, but don't worry about it. I want to pray for you. Amen. And after it's all over and said and done, and you're converted, you're going to be the one who strengthens the of the brethren. Oh, how, how great is the love of our God. Amen. I said, how great is the love of our God. Who can look at us and look in our eyes and know we're getting ready to mess it up? And say, I've already prayed for you. Wow. I've already prayed for you. And here's what's going to happen after I get done praying for you. Yeah, you're going to mess up, but you're going to repent and come back. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And then you're going to be the strength of all the brethren. Hallelujah. He didn't cast away on the junkie of life. He didn't say one shot and that's it, buddy. Amen. With God, it's not one and done. Amen. It's not two and done. Amen. What is it? It's as many as you need to get it right. To you, to you shake off everything and you can stand in the fullness of His destiny for your life. Why? Because you're at peace with God. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah, but, but Pastor, you just don't know what I did. I may not, but God does. Amen. And did you know what it said about Jesus? He's our high priest. What does he do? Whoever liveth, whoever liveth, to make intercession for us. What's that? I've already prayed for you that after you're converted, you're going to do this. Amen. He's prayed for you before you do it. Amen. I said he's prayed for you before you do it. Yes. Hallelujah. He's got the answer before you ever messed up. And he's already prayed it out. Amen. And he's already declared your destiny. I'm telling you today, you're at peace with God. This isn't a message of you can go do whatever you want to do. This is the message. Of, I heard one guy say one time, he said, you know, uh, David and Bathsheba were God's will. How did he know? Solomon. I thought, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. David, Solomon is not the sign that David and Bathsheba were supposed to get married. <laughs> Solomon is the sign that God can take the most egregious circumstances of life and turn them around. Amen. Amen. You can mess up as royally as you can mess up. Adultery yes. and murder are pretty bad. Yes. Amen. And God took that. And in David's repentance, remember Nathan the prophet came. That's where he got his name from. Nathan came in. So there was a man in the city who had, yes. who had much. And he's going to have a feast. 
There's another man who said he had one little lamb. But the man who had much wouldn't take any of his. He went over and took from the one guy who had just one little new lamb. Yeah. And took from him. And David was wroth. He said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, that man shall surely die. And Nathan looked at him and said, you be the man. Right. See, when the corrective power of the Holy Ghost comes, we can respond one of two ways. Right. You can get obstinate and rebel, or you can do what David David got off his phone and stripped himself and repented before God. Yeah. Amen. Glory. Glory. And in the end, Solomon came. Yes. Not that they were supposed to get together from the start, mm -hmm. but that God's reconciling exactly. and restorative power is greater than your messing up. Amen. New Testament scripture, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Mm -hmm. Where the power of sin is a manifestation, the power of grace is greater. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you are facing the temptations of life, know God's for you, and He's graced you to overcome. Amen. Amen. Not to undeserve a merit of favor. It is a strength to win against that which you don't think you have any power. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Peace with God. Thank you. Amen. God's not looking to hit you out of the park. Some people think, man, God's just sitting there with a baseball bat just waiting for us to mess up and go, you're out of here, pal. He sent Jesus to redeem you while you were dead in your trespasses and sin. You think the first time you mess up, he's going to boot you? No. Oh, my gosh. Come on, church. We have to have the revelation that God loves us. He deems us back in our presence. Yeah. And he is at peace with us. Yeah. And loves us. Yes. And then we're in his property. It's, I'm just catching up. We went off some different routes while I was catching up, okay? You don't have to catch up like this. You don't have to catch up like this, do you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, I sat in Dan Higgins' class, and all he ever preached was Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. And he took 25 and 26 in education. <laughs> but we always went to Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Every class, every time he opened the Bible, that's where he went. Yeah, that's right. He might not stay there. Yeah. He'd have a story with 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 a story. He'd be five days until he forget where he started. Mm -hmm. And he'd start back up, close it up, and he got back to the wing and said, Y'all forgot where I was, didn't you? And we all go, huh? <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> he knew where he was. Hallelujah. We are God's property. Amen. Let me tell you something. Not only are we God's property. We talk about this one way. Let's talk about this way. This way. This way. It's right now. We're God's property. Don't you think he's not jealous over his property? Yeah. He watches over you with a love. With a love that is powerful. He watches over you to secure, to secure you, to keep you, to sustain you, to watch over you, to protect you. You're his property. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you something now. I don't know how to use a gun. I've, I've shot firearms a couple of times. Now, Nathan's got a uh, pump shot gun, seven mag, uh, hunting rifle. Still got an shot gun. Single shot. Bowie knives. Get ready to buy him a crossbow. I mean, he wants to, you know. All I, keep, all I keep thinking is, oh, here we go. We're going to be cleaning deer. He's going to clean that deer to feel, dress, feel dressing. I don't want that bloody smell around my house. Hallelujah. Anyway. Lord, help me, Jesus. But let me tell you something. Somebody walks up to my house, I don't care how to use one. And what I want the deer is, I am jealous over my house. You mess with my family, I'm going to find some way to hurt you to keep you from messing with my family. They're my, in this sense, they're my property. That you know, I'm going to watch over them. And God watches over you. Yeah. If you ever even live at full gospel businessmen, they'd all stand outside before the meeting starts. They go, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. This man who ruled me is love. And all that, they just, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. This man who He's got a banner. You see, he's driven and easy to banner of victory. He's our captain of our salvation. You belong to Him. And you are stamped according to Ephesians with the Holy Spirit promise. There's a stamp on your forehead. And it ain't 666. Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> it says God's property. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you got born again, the devil was in trouble because you looked just like Jesus. 
Can you imagine the day of Pentecost? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, they all stumble out there. They get 3,000 folks. See, they got 3,120. All oh, about Jesus. They all thought, I just got rid of them. Now, now can you go? How many of you are? By the end of the week, they had 8,120. Hallelujah. All looking like Jesus. What do you mean? They're born of the Spirit. We became alive <laughs> under God. Our spirits were alive under God. Yeah. With God's property. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We may not see it, but in the realm of the Spirit, every spiritual force sees where God's property is. Mm -hmm. God watches over us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Moving here. Then we have, looking for, uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13. Her Jeff did a great job last week. Thank you both, Jeff, for filling in. Amen. Now, that was a rumor. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's true. Was it good? Amen. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. He got halfway through. Okay. <laughs> Woo! I guess I shouldn't open up that door, should I? <laughs> he promised he'd finish. Oh, we got halfway through it. Okay. Hebrews 13, 20, Now to the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect or mature in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in, in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, Man, hallelujah. What, let's see, he's keeping us. Now look up Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 9. Verse 12, Now neither by the blood of goats and calves, by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. Let me say something. Now, growing up classical Pentecostal, they, they, they are Armenian in doctrine. In other words, you get saved and get born again, again and again and again. In other words, if you sin, basically you got to get born again again. Because if Jesus came back right after you sin and you hadn't repented, you're going to die and go to hell. You know, being, the church I grew up in, you know, been in the, the communion services. Everybody said that, they're going, now, Lord, forgive me for every sin I've committed. The ones I don't know about, forgive me for those too. Before they ever took the blood, blood, blood and the... Uh, up and bread. Now, I, you know, if you got something glaring, you know, go ahead and get rid of it. But no, we're, not, we're afraid to take the table. We thought we going to fall over dead. He said, for this cause, many weak and sickly among many sleep, because they didn't rightly discern the Lord's body. didn't mean to do, you know, and they drank of the cup unworthily. The drinking of the cup was unworthy because you didn't rightly discern it. See, so the body was broken for our healing, the blood was spilled for our forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's not rightly discerned. You don't discern that, that's not rightly discerned. If you didn't like the discernment, people didn't understand that Jesus brought healing for us, and people died early. Because they didn't understand that he, he purchased healing for us. That's not rightly discerning the body. Right. Amen? Amen? Okay? He obtained an eternal salvation for us. You don't have to get born again again. You repent, but you don't have to get born again again. As a matter of fact, in my view of the scriptures, you can't. You get born again, if you ever reached the place you qualified and, quote, lost your salvation, you couldn't get born again because there remained no more sacrifice for sin. If you trampled on your foot the blood of the Son of God and done his fight to the Spirit of grace, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have the persuasion that if you, uh, if you, if you got that place, you walked in the, in the depth that these people walked in, Hebrews 11, 6, where the Bible is telling you. Yeah, he was chapter 6, I'm sorry. He was chapter 6. First few verses there. If you met those qualifications and lost your salvation because you, you turned your back on God, there remained anything for sacrifice. Now this is not turning your back on God out of anger or whatever. Oh God, just leave me alone. That's that's it's people who just say, I don't want it. I don't want it. I, I want to live with the world. I want to live with the devil. You know, I'm an atheist now. I don't believe. I don't even believe there's a God. You know, I have to turn my back on that. That's different. Okay. Otherwise, it's an eternal salvation. You don't. Lose it because you mess up. Thank God. Amen. I say thank God. Amen. You don't need to get saved every week. You don't. Amen. You don't need to get saved again and again and again. This isn't the Frosty Morning commercial. Sing it over and over and over again. Anyway, we don't need to get, get saved over and over again. We don't need that. Amen. We obtain an eternal salvation for Amen. us. I don't have to go back to Jerusalem next year at Passover mm -hmm. and offer another offering for my sin and my trespasses for all the things I did wrong last year and cover up everything from the years before. See, I'm not atoned. 
We do not have atonement. The word atonement means to cover. Did y'all know that? It means to cover. And see, under the old covenant, they weren't redeemed. They were atoned. They were covered for one year. And they had to come back the next year and do it all over again and push everything off for another year. And they come back the next year and do it all over again and push everything off for another year. And then in the end, so anytime you, have, you, have, you can bring the sin offerings and trespass offerings during the year. But at once a year, every year you had to do the Passover, you had to do all the, the whole nation had to you know, push off the sin for another year. Yeah. But Jesus came and entered in once and for all Amen. to obtain Amen. an eternal redemption for us. Amen. Not with the blood of bulls and goats or the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, but with his own blood he entered in. Going to the tabernacle made in the hands of men, he entered into the heavenly holies of all, and he dwelt in the mercy seat. Between us and the Father is that eternal redemptive blood. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Look at the first time real quick. A lot of stuff in first time these days in the church, some of the extreme grace narratives. But if we walk in light, verse 7, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ is in cleanses us. That word in the Greek is continual, continually cleanses us from all sin. He's always worthy. Why would I need to repent? Because your conscience needs to be purified. The Bible says the blood of Jesus purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. When your conscience is condemning you, you can't serve God like you should. So when we come in repentance, there is a cleansing that takes place in our soul in right. repentance that purges us from dead works Amen. to serve Amen. the living God. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. Thank God he can purge our conscience from it. What does that mean? You're not getting up 40 years from now still testifying on Wednesday night testimony service. How about how rotten you are? And how horrible you are? And how much of a dirty, rotten, low-down, skunky sinner you are mm -hmm. that God's merciful to. Amen. No. I was a sinner. I was saved by grace. And since then I have sinned, but God's forgiven me and God's cleansed me. Because I've repented. Set me free. That's right, set you free. Now what I test my testimony is on the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. What if you just sinned yesterday? I repented. Yeah. And when I put it under the blood, I'm purging my conscience from dead works. Amen. My conscience does not need to be reminded of what I did mm -hmm. once I repented. Once, once you put it under the blood, this, it's a non-issue anymore. Yeah. Amen. I said once you put it under the blood, it's a non-issue. Because God removes your iniquities as far from you as the east is from the west. He'll cast them to the sea and He will remember them no more. He's chosen not to remember them. God can remember everything He did, but He chose not to. See, that's the key. He said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to remember it. Wow, it's under the blood. He said, it's under the blood. Amen. And that blood is eternal. He didn't, he didn't run out. Of, no, it's not like, a, okay, at midnight you turn back into a pumpkin. <laughs> Hello? Uh, there's not a time date stamp on when your forgiveness and your and your washing and your cleansing and His remembrance runs out. It's Very eternal. Amen. We're not going to get to heaven and God's not going to go, I'm going to tell you, Jeff, Bill, I'm, I was, I thought you were about to lose it, baby. I'm telling you right now, I remember on such and such day, you did such and such, and I thought that was it. <laughs> it ain't going to be there. Amen. I said it's not going to be there. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. There's not going to be a, a, an archive of all the things you ever did. Hallelujah. Now Satan may have one, but he gets cast into the bottomless pit and then gets cast into the lake of fire, which is a second death, and all that stuff goes with him. Amen. He can scream it all he wants to. It won't matter. Praise God. Amen. Why? Because we're under the blood. Amen. We have an eternal redemption. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Can you say amen? amen. Of course, 1 John 1, 7 says here, uh, he cleanses us. That's when that, was the, that was the one, two, three, four, five, six thing is we're cleansed. So we, were, we got eternal salvation, and in that eternal salvation, we've been cleansed Amen. by the blood of Jesus. 
I'm so glad. Jesus said, be free. I know something there was sitting there. Aren't you glad Jesus set you free? Amen. Yeah. I'm so yes. glad to know that I'm cleansed. Yes. He took the handwriting of ordinances that were against me and nailed it to his cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bam. 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 He took it out of the way. And his full principalities, powers, he made a show of them openly. Amen. Triumphant yes. over them. Amen. Amen. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Amen. 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 Y'all give me five more minutes. Yeah. I got ten. Anybody give me five? Yeah. Ten. <laughs> Twenty. All right. Revelation one five. We got two more things. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cover these because they kind of they segue in each other a little bit. We're cleansed. We're washed. Can you say amen? amen. Revelation 1 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten from, from the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Oh, thank God he washed us in his own blood. Amen. Oh, thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why is it so important? Because man was the highest order of God's creation. Only subordinate to the throne of God. Thus, it took a higher to redeem him. So the blood of bulls and goats and the sprinkling of the ashes of the heifer sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. But it could not save your spirit. That's why I said, how much more shall the blood of Christ the eternal spirit of who set that spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen. Or wash the blood. Amen. And you've been to Jesus for his cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, thank God for the washing of the blood. Amen. I said, thank God for the washing of the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Churches are taking the blood out of their hymnal because they say it's a place of a bloody religion. Oh. Oh, God. There is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Amen. Redemption did not take place without the shedding of blood. Amen. Then right, right a few chapters over Revelation 12, 11, we'll close right here. We'll pick up next time we go to that um, my, my plan. Now, if the Lord changes it between now and then, we'll just say the Lord changed it. My plan is to start on the authority of the believer. I'm not going to tell you how that series or teaching would be. Because I'll be wrong. Let's back up to verse 10. And they heard a loud voice saying, Heaven, now has come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ, of his Christ, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down. You get tired of getting accused? Let me tell you something. You know who Satan accuses you to the most? You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. He accuses you to you the most. Mm -hmm. You're unworthy. Mm -hmm. You don't measure up. Mm -hmm. God is greater than you. God is higher than you. You don't have the right to be in His presence. You're, you're slime. You're scum. You're no good. Throw in the towel and quit. You'll never make it. But He's cast down. Mm -hmm. I said He's cast down. And he accused them before God day and night. Mm -hmm. And they overcame him who that dragon, the serpent, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. And they loved not their lives unto death. Yeah. Amen. When it could, came at the original Passover and they took the, the blood and, and, and hyssop and they took and they spread it on the the, the door, the lintel, and the doorpost. Now it was, water, it was a watery substance because they mixed it. So the blood would drip. And so if you drew a vertical and horizontal line, you got a cross going over each door. You still had a cross over. And anybody that entered in was kept from the death angel. And they and they sang and they, they sang hymns and songs and they testified that the forgiveness and 
mercy of the Lord in those, in the, in those uh, houses that night. Amen. They are came by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. Amen. And see, we love not our lives unto death. Brother Hayden used to say this, you're not ready to live until you're ready to die. Yeah. Yeah. What does it mean by that? See, when you know Jesus, you're born again, you're ready to go to heaven, you're ready to live. Yeah. That's the first day of your life, you're ready to live. Yeah. Is when you, when you know the Lord. And the, they had the blood over them and the lamb in them. Because they sat at that table and they ate the lamb. They partook. They had the blood over them and the lamb in them. Amen. It's all symbolic of our day. We got the blood <coughs> over us Amen. and the Amen. lamb in us. Yes. We don't love our life. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. He lives in me. Amen. Amen. I live, nevertheless, yet not I, Christ lives in me. The lamb in me. I got the blood over me. And I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Amen. I speak the word. I decree the word. I say what the word says. Amen. So Jesus said, Behold, I stand for the door knock. If any man open that door, I and my father will come in and we'll suck with him to make our abode with him. Yeah. Amen. Now think about this. So he that dwelt under the secret in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, we abide in God. He's already said, when you look through, I'm gonna come abide in you. Amen. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.